So that should have taken care of everybody that can't handle my personality type. Hey everyone, it is so good to be back with you. To be honest, I kind of missed making videos, so I'm back. I know I made a big stink about not wanting to use YouTube, and to be honest, I, even yesterday I was like talking to a friend. Hi Hanukkah. <laughs> and I was like, I really don't want to use it. And she's like, do you really hate it that much? And I was just like, hmm, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> so anyways, I actually wanted to kind of transition back into here just a little bit. Um, just because I, I thought, you know, I was thinking about some things. And I was just like, you know what? I can make YouTube videos again. Just here and there. No pressure. Just whenever I feel like making one, right? So um, let's do this little coffee chat like I used to except I'm cheating, this isn't coffee, this is Shakeology. Your daily dose of dense superfood nutrition by Beachbody. Um, yeah, this is chocolate with a little bit of peanut butter and then I put in just like half of a frozen banana, stick it in the blender and it's like dessert for breakfast. It's awesome. So anyways, so what do I wanna talk about today? Um, so a lot of you probably know if you do follow me on like social media and stuff that I did open a shop, another shop. Um, I kind of rebranded and just like started my um, journal shop over. Um, it's now under the name Nadia and me. Naughty and me, not Nadia and me. Don't be too confused there. I know my child's name's Nadia, but there's a whole story behind that. Um, and you can read about it on my website if you would like to. Um, the website is just naughtyinme.com. Um, I will link it so that you can see it or click it, whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm selling journals over there and I'm also a vendor for American Craft. So I haven't, I haven't really dug into you know, um, getting their products too much as of yet. I kind of wanted to test the waters and see how that all goes, but um, I do have that option. So, you know, when new paper lines and stuff come out, I will try to snag some of them. Um, I will say I'm having a couple issues with like the papers and all that stuff. Okay, so how do you feel about like the shipping costs of stuff? Because to be honest, I'm I'm an Amazon Prime member, so I'm spoiled rotten with two-day shipping, and my turnaround time for my shop is very quick. I will ship the next day, you know, if at all possible. Um, so that's not the issue. It's the cost of shipping. I'm used to like free shipping because of Amazon. It's great. Um, but, I, you know, I obviously have to charge shipping for my, my store. But the shipping costs for certain things are so stinking high and I can't help it. It's not like I have no control over what the USPS or whatever um, charges. Um, but like for things like the chipboard stickers. Now I had a couple people order them and um, one, like one person, hi Abby. <laughs> one person, you know, she kind of was telling me about, you know, um, if maybe there was an error in the system because as soon as she added in like the 12 by 12 chipboard stickers, the price of the shipping went up so ridiculous that she thought maybe there was an error. And I looked into it and I was like, no, that's what the ridiculous part is. It's not an error. It will actually jack up your shipping costs so high because of the size of the the chipboard because if you get that with another thing then it adds you know you have to package it in a bigger box and then it's just it's crazy and nobody's gonna pay for that so you know what I did I you know asked her permission and told other people too that I was willing to do it I took the the 12 by 12 chipboard stickers like they sell you know for all of the different collections and I actually took them apart and cut around like all of the stickers so that they could fit in a smaller packaging and you know and then once you do that you can ship it in such a small packaging and it's so like lightweight because you get rid of all that excess chipboard that you don't use anyways and then you know you only pay a couple bucks or something for shipping dollars i say bucks 
that's, I don't, okay, again, I ask this question a lot. Is that a Pittsburgh thing? You know, because I have my roots in Pittsburgh, or is that like a United States thing? Or do people understand that on the other side of the globe when we're like a couple bucks? Like, I don't know. So, anyways, that's my little off topic ramble. So, um, so yeah, I am like, how does everyone else feel about that? Like, the cost of like the chipboard stickers whenever you ship them, because I wanted to talk to somebody at American Crafts or one of those businesses and just kind of give it like my two cents. And I know that, you know, they don't need to be hearing everyone's opinions about stuff, but sometimes it's really helpful to just have some input. And I kind of wanted to, to like talk to them. And I said I was going to write to them a while back and I never did because I got distracted by other stuff. But I kind of wanted to just say like, hey, I, you know, kind of have some customers that weren't very happy with the shipping costs. And be honest, I don't blame them because it's really high. Like, is it possible to maybe sell them? I know the presentation might not look as like, oh, as, as crisp and clean and pretty with the one sheet all laid out where you can see each individual one, but I don't, I don't think that there'd be a lot of people that would be complaining about that if they could save a ton of money on shipping, you know, because if you don't get them in the store, you have to have them shipped to you. And the costs are just really high these days for, you know, just standard post or whatever. So, all right. So anyways, there's that. Um, so yeah, um, I've been selling stuff like that in my shop. There's not a whole lot left from like the American Crafts products because I haven't placed my new order yet because there's a lot of stuff that was on like back order and I didn't want them to ship things separately because if they do that, then it starts to add on too much cost to the shipping. And then once I sell them, I make zero dollars off of it. So you know. So anyways, that's, that's a whole other thing. I've been selling journals, but I have something to say about it. Okay. So you know that I've been kind of known for making like the junk journals and things like that. Um, I still have people asking me for custom orders. Um, and thank you so much for asking. Um, I kind of put a frequently asked questions page on my website that kind of addresses this, but, um, unfortunately I'm not I'm not doing custom orders right now, um, and I'm not really knowing when I will be doing them in the future. Um, I can add customization to ones that are already in the shop if that is something you wish. But again, if you if you get that, that's an added um, extra charge, and they're non-returnable or refundable, so you have to pay for it <laughs> and keep it because nobody else will buy it if I you know put your name in it or something. Um, so there's that, but I'm not doing custom orders for multiple reasons. Um, one, I did them all year last year and they kind of took up a lot of time. And if you bought one from me, thank you so much. Like this is not, this is not to come off as being like, I'm grateful for that. So please, I beg you not to take it that way because I was so thankful for every custom order that I did. It's a learning process for me though. Um, and I saw that as much as I love doing those, my camera went out of focus. I can see there's a little screen right here and it went out of focus. There we go. Um, as much as I love doing those custom orders, um, I was actually losing money. And whenever I did all the calculations by the end of the year, I already committed to them, you know, halfway through the year at the beginning of the year or whatever. I had them all lined up. So once I already committed to them, I, you know, wasn't going to like back out. But I started to notice months in that I was actually losing money because I... This is hard for me to say, but I, the, the market for junk journals is kind of when you lowball your prices, you ruin the entire market for your, for like your skill and stuff. And there's very, and there's are people that will pay high end prices and, you know, for your time and the quality of work and all that. And so I'm not saying that there won't be, but it's like in the journaling community, I kind of noticed that when people do it as a hobby or they don't do it as like a, like an actual legal business, um, you can kind of get away with um, charging less money, but for the people that have to pay taxes and have to, you know, are trying to not just do it as a hobby, but have room for growth and also pay yourself fair wages it's really hard to, um, it's hard. It's hard 
for me to sell my journals for what I actually believe that they are worth based on the time spent because the market has already been laid out with prices that are too low. Does that make sense? And that's going to come off wrong, but I've been guilty of it. And I actually had somebody tell me before that you need to raise your prices. And it's like, I want to, but nobody will pay it. Nobody's paying it because they could get similar books elsewhere for way less. And it's like, so, okay. So I guess this is kind of off topic, but isn't that what my channel is about? For anybody else that might be like hearing this and they're thinking about it or they're thinking about going into business for something like that, if I have one piece of advice, pay yourself fairly. Fairly. If you aren't even making minimum wage off of your own like products, you should be making more than minimum wage for room for growth and for this. Like it's a business. You don't have a boss. You are your boss and you're running this thing, you know, from the ground up. So you have to pay yourself more than just even the minimum wage, like bare minimum. You have to if you want to have room for growth and to keep going and to be able to make money off of it and, you know, um, pay taxes and stuff like you have to. But if you're not even making that, if you spent, you know, 10 hours, or I've heard people spend like eight hours on a journal and you're selling it for, you know, less than that, like with the cost of materials and all of your time, it's like, oh, pay yourself fairly. You're worth it. Handmade is worth it. Do it. <sighs> So now that I got that off my chest, um, I, I started to, um, I don't want to say get burnt out by making like the junk journals, but I was losing money last year doing like the custom orders just because I would have to buy new supplies for the majority of them um, based off of exactly what the person wanted. And uh, you, you kind of end up losing money sometimes. So um I somehow became known for making those. Um, and I, I don't see that as like a bad thing because I really enjoy making them, but that's not my roots. That's not where I started. And I wanted to, I prayed about it so much because I was feeling so like, there's something wrong here. There's something off about this. And so oh, I did what I do and I take it to God. And he was just like, yeah, you're right. Like, you know, sometimes I think that you get like swept up with, um, you're like on a roll and you have people asking you for things and you don't have, know how to say no, which is one of the things I struggle with so much, but you, you get to be on this like roll and then you, you start to lose, you know, um, like your grounding, like you start to like forget where you started and, and you lose your first love. And my first love, excuse me, my first love was making basic lines, notebooks, and I mean, and that doesn't sound fancy, but I'm not a, I mean, that's, I don't know anybody that doesn't have a use for like a basic line notebook, unless you're a total like digital person and don't use notebooks anymore. But um, for the majority of people, that's kind of like a good starting place for journaling and stuff too. The bigger books can seem kind of intimidating because they're expensive and um, they're like really like fancy and stuff. And that can be really intimidating for people to, to put the pen to the paper and use it. And my passion is not to for people to like just sit there and look at this pretty book and be like, it's too nice to use because I used to be one of those people. My passion is for people to write for them to write out their thoughts and their feelings and their struggles and their prayers and things they're grateful for. And all of that stuff that just like almost like fuels you, I really see such great significance in putting pen to the paper. Like I always use like hashtag like ink your story. That's kind of like my little, you know, because I really feel like when you, when you have a, a notebook that it's, it's cute and it's pretty and you want to use it, but it's not like so over the top fancy that you're intimidated by it. You will be more inclined to just like write out all of that stuff. And once you get on a roll, once it becomes uh, like pattern to you and becomes habit and routine, you let more of yourself, like you let more of your like personal thoughts and your, your heart out onto the page. And it continues to get like greater and greater and greater until you're just releasing so much stuff that it's almost like therapy. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me because that's me. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is that I have taken the journal shop, which is not called the journal shop anymore, but I'm saying like my journal shop back to its roots. And I am making um, just some, I'll, I'll make 
I'll make some like, I don't even like to call them junk journals because they're not made out of junk. I just call them heirloom books. I'll still be making those too. I actually have some stuff planned out for them. They'll be a little different than what you've been seeing before um, because I'm trying to keep the shipping costs lower and stuff too. But um, they'll be a little different, but um, I still have plans on making them. But a lot of the books that I have uh, like lined up in, you know, in my head and also like planned out for how I'm going to make them, they're basic notebooks, but they're just, you know, they're handcrafted and they're pretty and they're fun. I have one beside me. Hold on. This is one that I made that I'm keeping myself because I kind of messed it up a little bit. Um, but it's, this, these are what they look like. They're really like crisp, thin, um, just super, here, let me see if I can get it to focus on the book. It'll lose focus any other time until I wanted to focus on something. But anyways, you, you get the point. But they're crisp and they're they're pretty and they're, they're these little books with this little spine. And this one's blank, but um, it has the, at the front of it says this book belongs to. And then this one just has blank pages. Um, and then this is where I messed it up. <laughs> but then it just has my little logo there in the back. But um, yeah, I... There's something to me that's just so, oh my gosh, I love making these books so stinking much. It's, it's quiet and it's calming and it's slow and it's just like, oh, it's just so perfect. I love making these books. They're just, they're like making them is like fueling me. It's so great. So I'm going to be selling these, um, but the first collection that I'm coming out with, they're lined notebooks and I will show you one. Um it's all packaged up. Let me take it out real fast. I called it the wildflower collection. Um, and there's kind of a story behind that, but let me, let me blog about it. Um, and then I will, you know, and then I will share that on my website, but there it's the same type of book, you know, with the little gold book corners and stuff, but it has, um, lined pages, but it has this little, let me see if you can see it. Can we get it to focus? It has this little floral graphic here. <laughs> it's really not wanting to focus today. That's okay, but you'll see it like on the website or whatever. Um, it has a little little floral graphic on it um, that I hand drew. Um, there's a story behind the whole wildflower thing. So yeah, let me just write about it and then I'll share it. But so that's the first set of them. Um, and then I asked if you will if you would follow me on social media, that would be great <laughs> because I share a lot more on there than anywhere else. Um, you can follow my business account. It's um, at Naughty and Me Shop. Um, also, my personal one, I just put whatever on there. It's um, at Mary Beth Hancher. That's where I put like some of my crafty stuff, like my scrapbook layouts and um, just everyday life stuff. But nope. Cat's trying to drink my Shakeology. It ain't happening. No, it's not Mila. Um, so what was I saying? My cats are always distracting me. What the heck? So on my shop account, I was asking for help with quotes and stuff because I, um, if you, if you would send me a quote or something like an inspirational, like whatever, um, I'm compiling a bunch of them to stick in a new version of those types of books. They'll be blank paged with a um, like inspirational quote on each page. Um, lots of uses for them. That's what I want to make like really versatile journals. You could use it for like bullet journaling if you want, or just like everyday journaling, or you could just like, you can use it for so much. Oh my gosh. But um, I, I thought if I could maybe have some um, quotes that you would like to, um, like maybe to see on the page, I would incorporate some of those into them. And then whoever, you know, if I use them or whatever, I'll put your name into like a drawing and then pull one and, and then you can win one of the books of your choosing. So there's that. But anyways, so that's like my shop talk. What else have I been doing? I've been running, running, like I don't run. Okay. So let me, let me tell you my story about running really fast. So I hated running, always hated it. My sisters, amazing runners. Um, I have two older sisters. My oldest sister, she's 12 years older than me. And she's like, 
Oh my gosh. She's, she would like started the whole, um, you know, the Ellsworth girls, they're like good runners thing. That's my maiden name is Ellsworth. Um, but she was so good. She like held all of these records and she went to college and she ran in college and she's so, she's like so fast and just so good. And she, um, you know, and they're like marathon runners. They're, they're just amazing. And then along comes the third sister, Mary Beth, who everyone has these high expectations for because my middle sister, Diana, she, um, she was also like an amazing runner and, and was like held records and they all like went to States and like would be like winning all of these races. And then, you know, along comes me and everyone's like, Oh, another runner. And I'm like, eek. <laughs> Like, I'd rather just sit at home and play the piano and maybe sing some songs. Like, I don't want to run. But I, I tried it anyways because I was like, you know what? I've got, there's like this legacy, like the Ellsworths are good runners. Oh, my gosh. You want to talk about like a suck fest. That's me running. I, okay, here's, here's examples of how slow and bad I am. I signed up for my first 5K whenever I was probably like, I was probably like 10 or 11 years old. I ran this thing. I ran, I ran this thing and I got to the halfway point. It was a 5k in my town. It was a turnaround point and it was the halfway point. And I was so far behind that they actually sent an ambulance to look for me because everyone else had finished. <laughs> and then and then when I was in high school, I decided to run cross country. I actually went to an invitational, which is like everybody from like the certain, like it was Western Pennsylvania, basically. Um, everybody all meets in this one like campus. It was like a college campus and you ran the course and there was like tons of people there. There was, I think in my, in, in I think it was like, maybe there was like 800 some people running this. I ran it. Guess which place I came in. No, second to last, not last. I was second to last. And but I'm really, really certain that the person that was last was injured. So slow. I'm slow. Okay. And I don't even like to run, but it was just like, yeah, it's exercise, whatever. And after my first race, you know, when everyone realized how slow I was, all expectations were just low. And people just they I had the best team. They just cheered me on anyways. They were awesome. They used to just cheer me on as if I was actually like in competition. I ran track too. More stories about running. I ran track too, and I've never told anybody this before. This is a big secret that I've kept. I, I'm not competitive. It's not my nature. And I would always do the longer races. Like um, the longest one on track, it's the 3,200. It's the two mile. And I like doing the two mile. I'm like slow and steady. Um, <laughs> and uh, I ran that and there was somebody from the other team. I remember this so specifically. Somebody from the other team. I was used to always being the slowest. But this person, I was like passing them and stuff. And I was like, this is weird. Like there's somebody that's on the other team that's like, she's like me. Like she's slower than me. Like this is, I've never encountered this before. And she was struggling like really bad. And I remember I like saw her struggling and I, and I couldn't, I couldn't like, I didn't want her to feel because she looked like she was like, I didn't care. Like she looked discouraged and I did not get discouraged if I was last. Cause I just, I didn't care. I was just doing whatever. And I saw her get this like looking discouraged. So I, I was running beside her and I, I like got beside her and I started to pass her. And as I was going by, I was just like, Hey, I was like, I bet you can beat me. And I like just like smiled at her. I was like, I bet you can beat me. And I was just like, try to try to beat me. And so I kept running in front of her and making her like pass me. And, and then we were like going back and forth and back and forth. And then I would run and then I would pass her again and I'd be like, come on, you can beat me. You can do it. And she ended up finishing before me. And we just kind of, we didn't say much to each other after we just exchanged like this smile or whatever, but I wanted her to beat me so bad because I didn't want her to feel discouraged. Okay, so yeah, that's basically like me saying that I have nothing. There's like no competitive bone in my body. It's just not there. But running also, I didn't really like running. I just, I hated it. But I ran the last waste, waste, 
waste race I ran was, um, no, it wasn't a waste. It was awesome. It was a 10 K. I didn't even train for it. Really. I tried and I just didn't really, it didn't work out so well, but I ran a 10 K with my sisters. Um, my one sister, Diana, <laughs> now my oldest sister. I love <laughs> Steph. If you watch this, I love you so much. <laughs> She's competitive and she's good and um, she's so funny. We got separated and she ran it with her husband and um, and that's fine. But my one sister, Diana, she wouldn't leave my side and she could definitely, like, she would have been done so much faster uh, if she wouldn't have left my side, but I also wouldn't have finished. She just kept talking to me the whole time and just like chugging along beside me and, and, I, and I crossed the finish line and I was just like... Ah, and I have a race picture that I just cherish so much of us crossing the finish line. Her just like looking over with a big smile on me, just like, I'll have to, I'll have to show you if I can link it or put it in here somewhere. Here it is. Look at us. <laughs> but um, anyways, that was the last race that I ran. And that was like, gosh, I, that probably was 10 years ago. I think that was the great race in Pittsburgh, 2007. So that was like 10 years ago almost. But, um, so I haven't really run since I do like beach body workouts. I love to exercise that way, but running, not really my thing, but my friends, I have some friends that run and they started out the same way as I do. Like they didn't want, they hated running. They could barely make it through like a mile or whatever. And they run like marathons now. And I got to thinking, maybe if I just tried it, maybe I'll see. Now I have a big enough property where I can actually run around my property. Um, and uh, just my backyard, one loop around my backyard is like a um, quarter of a mile. But if you go around my full yard, it's like half a mile or something. So I can go around my yard. And that's what I started doing. Um, I just recently took it to the road, but there's something about it. I was just like, I think I don't hate this. I don't think I hate this anymore. And so I have goals. And my new goal is to, to work up to... Um, run a marathon relay with my sisters. So we would do it like in a relay form because I, I'm not sure that I'll ever have the endurance or um, I, I kind of have some um, hip and knee problems. I have a lot of like weird, like old lady problems for, you know, being so young, <laughs> but I have some of those issues. So I don't know if I'd ever be able to actually work up to doing even a half marathon or a full marathon, but um, I do think I could do a relay marathon with my sisters. And so that's my new goal. So that was my really long version of why I'm running. I don't think I had, excuse me, I don't think I had anything else to say about that. Um, other things. So I know that this doesn't interest everybody, but I've actually had some people that suggest that I should do this or maybe like kind of add it into my channel. Um, everyone, I mean, if you don't, if you don't know it by now, um, I'm doing something terribly wrong, but, um, I'm a Christian and I, and I, um, I really love like Bible study. Like I, I love it and I have a whole story and it's not, it's not something I, I necessarily share <clears throat> publicly. Um, but I will just sum, summarize it as Jesus wrecked my life 10 years ago in a really, really good way. <laughs> Um, and I did not grow up, you know, oh, I, I, you know, I was a Christian from a young age and I was, you know, grew up in church and stuff. No, I, I, I did not have, a, um, my upbringing was I did go to church, but I grew up in a, like a legalistic church and all kinds of stuff. Um, it was, it was pretty bad. And we ended up, um, leaving that whenever I was, whenever I was pretty young still. And, um, for many years, I kind of just went off course and, um, if you're sitting here really annoyed about me talking about Jesus all the time, I was you. <laughs> um, but I, you know, I, through a course of a whole lot of events that I won't get into, um, I, I, I came to know, I came to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and my savior. And, um, I'm very like skeptical by nature. I'm just kind of a skeptic. So I had to do a lot of research and kind of like figure some stuff out. It took me a while to kind of get on course, but I, and then I, I found, you know, I, I, I found the truth and I was just like, you know, I, if I didn't have something in this cup, I would drop it just for, 
theatrics, but I was just like, whoa. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's really, he's been very um, evident in my life for the past 10 years. And I have this great, you know, bond and relationship with him and it's awesome. And woo, I, this is off, out of focus again. A lot of people know that, but that's just me sharing um, for anybody that doesn't. But I had a lot of people that say, say things to me like, um, privately or on my blog or whatever, or, you know, email saying like, you should do some like Bible study videos or something or whatever. And there's a lot of people that do like that sort of thing. So would you be interested? I mean, for obviously for those that are interested in that sort of thing, if you're, you know, I, I get that there's a lot of people that aren't, but I will, um, <clears throat> I will like, if I do those, I can always put it in the, this camera, it's killing me. I'll always put it in the, um, like the description or in the title so that you know, you know, what the, the video is about or whatever. So you can choose to watch it or you can choose to not watch it and that's fine. But would anyone else be interested in that? I don't know. Cause I, you know, I don't know everything, but I do study a lot and some things that I find and that I study, it's just like, Oh, I want to share this. So I might do that. Um, I also, I have my, my newest project life album right here beside me. I need to catch up on it. Oops, it's upside down. I'm about to spill stuff out of it. I've been using this one a little bit here and there, and I haven't done a whole lot in it. Um, just filled in a couple pages, but I could share that sometime if you'd like to. I kind of stopped doing that. Um, and I also do my scrapbook layouts for those that follow me on my personal slash crafty Instagram account, which is just at Mary Beth Hancher. Um, I've been sharing scrapbook layouts here and there that I've been doing, which are a lot of fun. Um, and then th at the end of, or when I have a nice stack of them, I hate this camera. Right now, I absolutely hate it. I don't want to get any closer to get it to focus. Go on! Sorry. <laughs> but I was going to say my scrapbook layouts, um, I've been doing one a week. I'm a little bit behind. I always am, but that's okay. And uh, just to tell like the best story of the week or whatever, and I just call it scrap my week. Um, but I've been making those and um, I have been planning on punching holes or I actually have started doing it on some of the ones, but I punched holes along the edge with my cinch and then I plan on binding them together um, whenever I'm all done. So to make like books or whatever. So that's going to be fun. I need to stop doing this video before I actually punch my camera right in its snout, right in the lens. Boom. This is annoying. <laughs> I hate whenever it goes in and out of focus. So anyways, I was thinking of doing some things like that. And I also wanted to do some like, um, some journaling like videos. Um, <clears throat> I won't necessarily have them all on YouTube. I wanted to save some for exclusive newsletter um, subscribers to my to my shop because you know business so uh, and I wanted to do some like journaling videos and give you some ideas for stuff like that or like journal with me or something so I don't know what do you think what do you think yay or nay I'm not um, I'm not gonna ever ask you to subscribe to my channel because <laughs> I I I if you want to subscribe, that's up to you. You do it. That's fine. Um, if you want to unsubscribe, that's also your choice. You can do it. I, my personality type is not for everybody, and I get that. And I'd rather you unsubscribe instead of being mean. <laughs> I see some people on YouTube, they're so mean to some of the people I subscribe to. And I'm like, what in the heck? Just don't subscribe to their channel. Like, if you don't like them, gosh, you know, you don't have to always be like, oh, thumbs down, this video is stupid. Like, just, how about don't say anything? Gosh, like, what? <sighs> Anyways, um, so yeah, that's that's my coffee chat for the day. I think I've said enough. I, this is probably really long, um, but I hope that you are all well. Thank you so much for listening and sticking around. If you've stuck around through all of these months of me not posting videos and whatever, thank you. You're very sweet. Um, and I hope to be back uh, soon to just share whatever, whatever is on my heart that I feel like sharing. That's, that's what's going to happen from here on out. So, all right. I hope you're great and have a wonderful day. Bye.